Okay, before we begin, are there any issues that we need to tackle first? Like any fresh questions that we want to tackle immediately? No? Alright, I want to make sure that each and every individual is familiar with right, the SAS um, system. Alright, I'm sharing my screen, so just let me know if you're not really seeing the screen or if you're seeing it properly. Alright, but I want to make sure everybody is familiar with this page, right? So many of the issues really stem from overrides or choosing courses or what specific courses we should like enroll in. Alright, so as I said, this is basically a session to answer these questions. So if there are any questions, you can just let me know. Alright, because I don't want to go through an entire process of doing something that we all understand clearly. Alright, so could you guys just let me know what the issues are? You can unmute and talk. It's not a problem. Alright. You haven't started registering as yet. Okay, you haven't started registering. Alright, so... Okay, so let's just go through some of the basic information. And as you guys remember the questions, you can just let me know. You can just put information in the chat. I hope that my fan isn't bothering like the quality of, you know, sound. But let me actually turn it down. Alright, so Giovanni, you know how to access this system, right? Like the student administration system. You know how to? All right, no. Um, so basically what you can do is just type in SAS, all right, generally, and you should be able to find the UE system for it. Um, let me see. All right, you should be able to find this area here. All right, so you're going to be able to find this area into secure area, and you should be able to type in your student ID as well as your password. Right, so like generally no, like there are different like, I think for no, you haven't really received a password really. You'll receive like a date that you're going to be using for your password. So you can work with that and your user ID number for everything. Right, you're going to be using it for everything. So whether it is like to go into, a, well, exams, sometimes you're going to need to use your ID number, right? You're going to need your ID number for literally everything. Because most times we don't really focus on your name. We don't really care about your name that much, but we'll use the ID numbers. So your ID number is just something that you you would have gotten in your acceptance letter. You need to memorize it, right? It's basically like a passport, I guess, um, through the entire UA system. All right, but generally, after you type in all that information, you should find here your personal information and your student services. All right, we're going to be focusing on student services now where you can find all this information. And remember, guys, um, if you have any questions, just you can unmute and just let me know immediately. All right, we're going to be focusing on registration specifically because you don't have to look at student records or anything like that so far. Because student records, you can look at like your payment and your grades and stuff like that. All right, but we're going to be focusing on the registration thing, which is the main thing we're working on. All right, on the registration, you'll be able to find all of this information as it relates to your Banner 9 registration, which is a system that we use to register for courses, as well as selection of terms when you're looking at um, looking at late adjustments, um the course overrides and different types of stuff like changing your major and stuff like that right so and your different timetables all of the information for registration is going to be well on the registration right so what we want to really look at is a banner registration all right and it should bring us to this tab here where we'll be able to find like all the information for banner which is prepare for registration view registration information browse classes plan ahead all of these features are um well useful or can be proven to be useful but the main thing we're working on is probably register for classes and it is here that we can find all the information for our general classes all right let me just check real quick there are no questions 
Alright, majority. I don't see any chem majors so far. But every biochemistry major has to do chemistry anyways. So I guess we'll look at that. Alright, so here is generally where you have to select your different um semesters. Alright, so I'm just mainly doing this for Giovanni that said like he hasn't started yet. So your different semesters, you're going to be working with, you know, semester 2023 and 2024, semester one and semester two, right? You can register for both semesters. It is possible to register for semester one, all right, and semester two right now. All right, so here's semester one, and then you can always like change and look at semester two, all right? So just making sure that you guys are aware of that so it's possible for you to se select semester one and semester two so you can go to semester two all right so just give it a second all right and here's semester two all right so just going back through this so banner does give errors like that and some persons really think that the system isn't working when it's giving errors like this all right it just constantly gives errors like this sometimes you just have to continue like reloading the page or some person's going to incognito all right in order for it to work um properly for them all right but yeah so what are the major issues that you guys have with um the registration because uh somebody's i sent a survey in the chemistry group and some persons say that they have like issues with everything. Some persons have issues with overrides. So just let me know right now what are the issues we're having here. All right, go ahead. Hi. Um, I just joined the meeting. Uh, so I'm registering for biochem. And um, I'll, I'm constantly getting prerequisite errors, and I've I could requested overrides for these um like for a long while now. So I was wondering what's going on. All right, so prerequisite errors. Okay, so you understand what the errors generally mean, right? Prerequisite. It sounds like I need my Cape Unit two grades to come out before I can get to add the class. I'm guessing. I don't know. Yeah, it's exactly that. All right, so. You can find on the system a list of all the errors that you generally need and as you said you have a prerequisite error so it means that you probably have a course that you haven't passed or a course that you failed or in the case of freshers you probably don't have something that is required all right so yeah generally here you're gonna need to really re request for your override all right so um your cape unit ones and your cape unit twos are important for these different areas if you've requested your override it will take a while all right it will take um how do i describe a while i guess a while in a jamaican context probably a month um but like it will take a while because it is summer most of the lectures are off or like not in the country right um and these overrides are usually accepted manually so it's not that the system like sees the overrides and then automatically approves them like that the lecturer generally goes in and accept each and every override like it's kind of like handpicking right but generally the overrides should be fine after your results come out because after your results come out then your prerequisite, prerequisite error will no longer be there right and that is if you pass your capes at the level required for the university all right so yeah so if you're gonna be waiting on those overrides right you're gonna have to wait a bit longer probably until like the second um well the penultimate or the last um week in august thereabout you're gonna have to like wait on it because it's manual it's not really automatic like that okay great thank you all right so it's not finish do that okay go ahead Ellie. Um, um, I'm sorry. Um, when the override is given, how do we how would we know? Is it the email, or we'd have to go back on SAS to check? All right. Okay. So let me just let me answer that question. Like after Mr. Clark's question, so he's asking like how we go about override specifically. All right. So let's say I'm 
applying for a specific course let's say um all right i have 18 credits here let's just let me just trigger an error real quick um give me a second let me just try to trigger an error real quick hopefully loads wow all right mm, this should work all right so banner and its systems i tell you these issues all right so let me just quickly try to like do this all right so hmm all right hey, man. i don't know why it's so, going through this give me a second go ahead yeah i was saying that um they posted in the group that the banner nine system might be down due to their them renovating it over the weekend like yeah it's over the weekend specifically right but it should still function um because it's not the date specifically for it um yes all right so it it has been functioning all right let me just go for a specific just, well i don't think it has to be specific let me just go for a random course this um all right so let's say i want to do let me just select this course add all all right and let me try to submit this course all right so we have and that's not supposed to happen all right but we have this general issue here maximum um or exceeded all right so that's an error here that we've gotten because in semester one after just over 18 credits and that's the maximum right um so if you try to go over that then you'll get an error all right so that's that there so once you trigger the error so it will be a prerequisite error or whatever other error right or a major restriction error for persons doing psychology or want to do psychology etc all right you're gonna get that error specifically now what you should generally do to apply for overrides for those errors you really come under registration and select term all right you're going to be looking for the specific term in which you had the error for so that error for that course was for here in semester one all right that essentials of english grammar all right so i'll just submit that semester so what it basically it looks like it hasn't done anything but what it basically does is like configure the system right to focus on semester one right so looking so if you select semester one if you go on a late adjustment or error overrides or anything like that it's gonna be fine-tuned to semester one specifically so if i ask the request overrides you sh you should be able to see the course that you got the error from so here since i got an error for semester one for this course if i select the term for semester one and go to overrides you're gonna see this course here all right so you should be able to select that course and you could have a reason for the override for example i guess um you have like k unit 2 pending or something like something like that you can just give a reason for your override or for requesting the override and you should be able to just like submit the request all right so and then it will give you the entire status like the type of override you need all right so depending on the error you'll get a status there and you can always delete it after all right if you don't no longer require it all right so how you actually know that you get the override specifically um i would probably have to check but you do get an email all right there's a log that appears let me see if i can find it i didn't receive some overrides from last year so let me try semester one for this and look at my overrides all right so you'd see stuff like this come up right on sas you'll see override approved or declined or whatever all right so you're gonna be able to see all of these different things here make sense so i applied for these overrides and i've gotten them approved some of them well one of them declined for no reason but yeah Right. Um, uh, yes, um, one more question. So when you have gotten the override mm -hmm. from the uh, 
from the choosing the part where you're choosing should, is it that you should keep it and not remove it from that part or okay you're saying like, that after we request the over then we've gotten it do we delete it from up here um no you, okay. you see where you um where you had um searched for the um course that you're from for the course right there all right let me go back like here mm -hmm. Yes, right here. Mm -hmm. Um, after you have gotten the after um you had gotten the error, should we have had removed the right here that you have highlighted highlighted in gray? Should we have removed it or should we have kept it? Okay, so for the time. All right. Um, so after you receive the override, it will automatically just appear on the timetable. Will automatically appear as registered. Right, so you don't necessarily need to remove anything. Right, um, if you're if you get the error and you remove the course from here, you should be able to still apply for the override. Once you get it, it just automatically becomes registered. Like the green registered areas here, it just becomes a registered course after you get the override approved. All right, it does. Okay. Another okay. thing, you can check if you get a, got an override here. But usually you get an override in you, you get the message right that it has been approved or declined in your personal email that you put in your personal information as well as your UE email. Right? So you would have gotten like two emails, right? And it would show up here. So you'd know via your email if you were reject well, if it was declined or approved. Alright, for overrides like that. Okay, thank you. Alright, no problem. Any other issues or questions relating to anything like that? All right, no issues. All right, another question that a lot of persons generally have like issues with. Um, well, let me check it quickly. All right, when you're searching for a course, all right, let me go for let's say um, 1810 right that everybody here would have to do all right when you're looking for courses like this right a lot of persons get confused by the different panels etc right no when you're looking at lectures like this some persons are wondering whether or not um, you attend only one specific area or a next area but this generally just means that the lecture is on two separate days, right? And uh, this thing that says like 290, let me zoom in, 290 out of 320 seats remain. It basically is, is stating that there are 290 seats like free, right? For persons to join. So a lot of persons really look at it and think that, you know, there is just like a, a small amount of seats remaining or no seats remaining. But it's based on the way we interpret how we read it. Alright. Um, and also here you'll see time conflicts come up on the screen. So if you're just out for something, let's say that this class is at 8 a.m. right to 9 a.m. right on Tuesdays, right? You can see here that I have French um 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Tuesdays. So that's why it comes up as time conflict. And it's one of the things that we use to make sure that we don't clash courses. Right, and clashing courses is one of the worst experiences you'll ever like experience, I guess. Right, so try your best not to clash courses generally. Right, um, I know that there's another thing about chemistry. It's not chemistry. I think it was a biochem course or something like that, where it has tutorials on the same day at two different times. Right, um, I will probably have to like um refer to the biochemistry representative about that. All right, because I'm the chemistry representative, not really sure about all those biochemistry courses. I've done some of them, right? But I'm going to have to refer to Chadik about that. Um, the issues that you guys will have with that. But are there any other questions though? Um, Giovanni, did you understand like when I went over how to request override? hoping you got that and another thing for persons looking for the courses that they want, would like to register for or need to register for right um 
I recommend that you use this handbook, right, which is the latest handbook that we have, right? And you should be able to find all the information you need in this. Um, everybody here knows like how to use the handbook, right? Just drop a one in the chat if you're familiar with this document. Alright, you guys are familiar with it. So you guys know how to use it and know where to find the courses, etc. And what your courses are about and stuff like that. So you should be able to find it. Since most of you guys are doing like biochemistry, like specifically, you should be able to just find where you need to, well, all the courses that you'll need for biochemistry. Right, looking at this specifically, in order to do biochemistry courses, you need chemistry unit one and unit two, as well as C set biology. You don't necessarily need K biology at all to do it. Right, so you'll see all your prerequisites that you need. Right, so note that you need chem both units of chemistry. So yeah, if you haven't received the grade for chemistry unit one or unit two, then you do not qualify to sit these courses, and that's why you're getting that prerequisite override error. Well, the prerequisite prerequisite error. Right, um, that's the main thing there. Right, and then you'll have stuff like core requisites. You'll get core requisite errors if you don't do two courses that you know should be done together and stuff like that. Right, so you should be able to find information for these and for your specific majors. What you should be doing in level one. This is what all biochemistry majors should be doing in level one. Right, you're gonna need all of chemistry, every level one chemistry course. Right, and every level one um, biochem and microbiology course. All right, so it outlines exactly what you need. All right, and I know that you guys are already familiar with your language requirements, right, and your critical reading and writing for science and technology, engineering, and medical sciences that you guys need to complete. All right, so you guys are all familiar with the foundations and stuff like that that you need to do. And you're familiar with the courses that you can't do as a SciTech student. <laughs> Cause there are some courses that you are not like supposed to do as a SciTech student. Um, go ahead. Yeah, where do we register for the foundation courses? Oh, you do it on the same system here, like on SAS. Um, well, this is Banner 9 specifically. You'll just have to look for phone, right? So you look for foundation courses like that. And you'll type in whichever foundation courses you have 1301 for law and gov um 1101 for carbon civilizations um 1014 for the critical reading and writing that you have to do in your first year without a doubt right um you have 1019 for persons who haven't received a one in english language or a one or two in communication studies are passed um with i think it's a one I think it's a grade one or a grade three. Don't remember in ELPT, right? So there are different things that you have to really look for. So your foundation courses can all be found here, like as simply as that. Um, so you're gonna have all these different foundation courses, and you need to know which specific course you should do, cause we we don't do ten, thirteen, right? Because this is for social science students. What we do is ten fourteen, right? So. You should be able to just look out for that specifically all right so you should be able to find every foundation course that you need all right and for SciTech students you have some foundation courses that you should do right um that no one else really should do and then you have other courses that other persons do that you show you don't all right so for other faculties like humanities right they'll have things like language argument and stuff like that that we don't do and science um science medicine and technology that we don't do either right but we're required to do some of these courses you have your hand up same way um sante no more questions all right so there's a specific course that scientific students should not do right um it's in the handbook right there's like a regulation for it let me see if i can find it um it's one course um science medicine and technology that we should not register for um yeah so science and media and communication well not that this course specifically right so yeah this course that you must not do which is foundation um 1201 right there are cases of persons who register for 
for this course because they find it interesting but even if you find it interesting as a site exchange you should not do it <laughs> right so yeah of course it's like that all right so you're gonna it's basically for everyone else that doesn't do science and technology all right yeah and you guys are yeah should just be aware of that specifically and for your language requirement you guys already know that sign language does not like meet your language requirement and you'd need to do one of the other languages one of the other four well five well four languages are um supposed to be done now i guess All right but yeah so it's this one course that you know site students should not well must not do All right um so i just want to know have you guys already registered for 1014 the persons who started to register because like banner is still up for now but it's gonna be done for like tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that i believe all right and then after that you should be able to continue all right so i want you guys to make sure that you have registered for 1014 that you need to do in your first year all right any other questions any issues all right any of the 14 of you guys have questions all right let me see how long does it normally take for the foundation courses to be approved um it's the same thing that i was probably explaining earlier that we don't have a time on that because there are a good amount of um persons who lecture those and it's the lecturers that would have to manually like approve your override so we're not sure how long that will take specifically because most of them are on vacation right or just not operating right now right because it is the middle of the summer technically right so you have to cut your lectures some slack i guess so it depends on them some persons may get their overrides approved early some persons may get like the literally the week when the course starts and stuff like that um but you just have to make sure that you apply for the override early and you should be fine because teaching starts on the 4th of september so you have um an entire month and a little before you actually need that to be override overrided i guess and if it goes on for a good while and you and teaching has actually started and you have not gotten the override just attend the lecturer's class <laughs> right and speak to them they'll be able to you know just log on to the system and just give it override right then and there all right it's the same thing for like psychology all right that a lot of persons go through all right any other issues don't be afraid to ask the questions you know even if it has been asked a thousand times if you want something to be cleared up just let me know and we can run through the information all right go ahead um for the foundation courses is it that it must be done in the first semester or we can do it in the second one well all right so uh, Okay, so the only restrict the only restrictive course that you have is foundation ten fourteen, right? Or ten nineteen, depending on whether or not you have the grades or the ELPT score to do it. Right? But ten fourteen is a one semester course. So you're not restricted in your semester that you should do it. It's recommended that you do it in your first semester. A lot of the times persons recommend that. Right, because the first semester is it the first semester or second semester? I think the first semester is a little shorter than the second semester, right? Or it's a little longer. I'm gonna have to like rethink that, right? But a lot of persons recommend doing it in your first semester, but it's not a restrictive thing. You have to do it in your first year, but you can decide whether or not you do it in your first semester or your second semester. Because I want especially the persons doing chemistry to realize that. Um, I'm not sure if it's completely enforced, but within your handbook, let me see. Let me look at the program details for chemistry. I mean, any chemistry course. No, I don't need the program details, actually. Let me go to 
second year chemistry all right for second year chemistry notice that you need your foundation course in order to do it it's written in your handbook like so it's only here though so i'm not sure if it's like enforced okay right? but you need to complete these courses in your first year all right so 1014 or 1019 okay thank you yeah all of the foundations you can do it whenever you want actually um any other time because you have law and gov and you have um well you have law governance society and economy and you also have carbon civilizations that you have well that you can do right or you can switch out one of them for a language as you guys know already so it should be fine no, you don't need to do a language in your first semester. Um, it depends on which language you're talking about. Because I would recommend. I would recommend. Um, but like it depends on what language you're talking about. Whether or not I recommend doing it in your first semester or your second semester. But most languages, you generally have to do them in your first semester. Unless you're doing Japanese. Or Spanish or French <laughs> um, to be very honest um, but yeah Mandarin you have to do it in your first semester because it's only offered there alright um, yeah Miss Go has it in your first semester is lang a language is mandatory for the most part yeah for your degree you don't have to do it in your first semester but it's mandatory so if you want to do it all like in your final year, second semester, you just have to make sure that you get that done. All right? So you can do it in your first year if you want. Just get it out of the way and move on. What I to see is like a lot of persons tend to like minor in languages and stuff like that. And if you do that, I just want to make it clear though, if you continue a language, right? Um, a lot of persons tend to say that it doesn't count. As a phone, as like as a, what you would say no, it doesn't count, right? Specifically, if you like, let's say you do one French course and then you do the other French course after, it really doesn't count after that, all right? So yeah, since you have a CSEC language, oh, you still have to do your language requirement, um, even if you did that, you still have to do it, all right, for the most part. A lot of, yeah, you can do that, or if you don't want to do that, you can do something else. Um, are you saying that? No. Let me see. It does depend, though. Which set language do you have? It depends on the grade, I guess, as well. Alright, but... Are you telling me no, that you don't have to do it? Let me see something. Oh, you don't want to. Oh, all right. Um, but the language requirement, the university is really like um trying to push the like the multilingual type of university thing, right? So most persons tend to do that. But the thing you know, it's not for the most part, right? Um, you can use the language to replace a foundation. So if that is more comfortable than you doing like law and gov or carbon civilization, then that's fine. All right. So it really depends. If you really hate language, I guess um, guess you could do something else. But um, I recommend that you speak to an academic advisor about that because some persons that have completed Cape languages, um, they don't have to do it. All right. So. It really depends on your specific situation. Speak to your academic advisor about that. Languages take a lot of dedication. I guess, I guess so. Alright, but it's not too hard, difficult to get like A's in those languages. So it's not too difficult. I mean, it's much harder to get an A like in university than get an A in like high school. Like, I'm not sure if anybody like realized that like sixth form was like a really easy. Um, compared to stuff like this, but yeah, oh, you want to focus on your major. A lot of persons tend to complete what they're doing in your first year and then focus on their major going up because I know that a lot of persons probably do crit in their first semester and a language in their first semester, 
and then they do long of work urban civilization in their second semester so when they reach second year third year they only focus on their specific like focus or their specialty all right but just note that you have to do right your foundations any other questions though anything else Question. Some other person is joining now. Is that everybody here is major in biochemistry or something under biochemistry? Because I saw one general chemistry major. I'm not sure how to feel about that. Alright. Um, but alright. Okay. Alright, so are there any major specific questions that you guys have or just generally academic questions that you guys have? I don't want to go over an hour. It's like 142, so it's fine. Alright, so I can answer a few more questions and end on the hour. But it depends on whether or not you guys have any more questions to ask. Alright, I'll be free to answer them. Alright, go ahead. Level 1 chemistry courses. Level 1 chemistry courses are fairly fine. I don't mind them that much. Alright, um, it really depends though. So, for me specifically, alright, I think that the quality of the courses depend on you specifically more so than the information or the academic rigor of some other courses. Let me stop sharing. Alright, it really depends. Alright, because um, personally for me though, um okay so how do i say this right personally for me though right i see where personal growth and like your mental health and everything really plays a huge part into how you actually like perform because um a lot of persons would have known that i'm so somewhat good at chemistry right but due to um personal reasons and stuff like that pff, chemistry right did have me away um it wasn't the information wasn't hard you know but if you aren't like in a great place personally right then even if the, the course information isn't that difficult you'll find your yourself struggling basically right but the chemistry information is not that bad right um for first year it's just it's an introduction into physical chemistry so you're gonna need your physics you're going to need your physics and your additional mathematics so you're gonna have like stuff like integration gibbs free energy um you're gonna have things like gravitational um yeah gravitational constants and stuff like that um just general physical chemistry crystalline solids um bonding vscpr theory mo theory stuff like that for chemistry one courses your organic chemistry is going to come back your allies ketones um you're gonna deal with completely different chemicals different um types of reactions like ozonolysis um and demercuration and mercuration reactions and stuff like that and you're gonna be looking at back at like ir spectra and stuff like that but you're gonna actually be looking at like more calculations more number based stuff right so it's a mixture of physics right um and a good amount of mathematics Right, as well as just chemistry knowledge generally. Your keep chemistry knowledge will carry you through through fine though. Especially when you do acids and bases. It's really the same thing, except for when it's not. <laughs> um but yeah, and microbiology is pretty cool as well. I don't want to really speak to microbiology and biochemistry. I know a fair bit about it, but I don't want to speak about it because I'm not the biochemistry rep. But yeah. But they're pretty cool. They're not that bad. But you need to be in the right place and the right frame of mind to do the courses. Alright, because as I said, the information is not that hard. Alright, but depending on you and how you feel in the moment, it may feel like a mountain on your shoulders. Alright, so just focus on that though. The exams are not that different from... Okay, your chemistry courses are all multiple choice exams, by the way everything is multiple choice that doesn't mean it's easy <laughs> right that doesn't mean it's easy right it's all multiple choice so you can't like explain your way to an answer it does that doesn't exist 
right? So it's either you're wrong or you're right. Um, and you get like huge calculations. So you'll sit through calculations that carry you through like an entire page of work just to see it, select A, B, C, D, E, R, E. Like it's based off of that. And most, some of your exams like 1820 and 1810, right? There are 20 questions. So that means that the margin of error is huge if you get one wrong, all right? It's something like that. It's not a lot of physics that is incorporated though. Like it's stuff like momentum and velocity um, and the wave functions. Well, I guess you do wave functions in Kate physics, probably not, I don't know, all right? Wave functions, um, yeah, it's really something like that. Stuff and some calculations that you're doing like in pre-calculus and stuff like that, it should be fine. Alright, so if you guys know about like wave conformations, etc., you should be fine with that. It's not a lot. But the chemistry is pretty fine though. I'm biased though, but the chemistry is pretty fine. It's not a problem at all. Alright. And if you guys plan to do a language, I do recommend if you're looking for the easy way out, that you probably do Spanish. If you're looking for something interesting, you probably do French. Anything else is more difficult, right? Um, but I don't tend to recommend that persons do the easiest thing ever, because that's not the best way to get a well-rounded education, just to do the easy thing. Um, the lab courses, have, yeah, lab courses do have like um in course um exams i know that microbiology and biochemistry you have like a final exam for your lab courses where you do practical information you don't do a practical exam per se but you do a test paper right going over methods and stuff like that you that you have done through labs in chemistry i haven't seen that no you don't do a final exam but you have lab tests and usually before labs or after labs you'll have lab quizzes that you have to complete so let's say that you're going to do a lab on buffers, right? Um, or super acids or something like that. You'll have an entire quiz to do on that topic, right? Before you actually go into the lab to touch the stuff, right? So generally you have stuff like that that you have to complete. And a lot of them involve moles. So a bunch of mole calculations, right? And stuff like that. And for organic chemistry, your mechanisms. And mechanisms get really long compared to Cape. But yeah. I'm not sure if bio microbiology and biochemistry does a lot of lab they probably do, right? But can't really speak to that. I may have another session like where I invite Shadik um to go through it, right? Who is your biochemistry rep? Well biochemistry section rep. So yeah. So everybody's fine so far, no issues no concerns i've answered all the questions that you guys wanted answers for sure so you guys can just go on like well if you plan to go on after the system goes down right you can go through everything and do it to the best of your ability because i want to make sure that my chemistry people are set you know even though biochemistry is here as well side eye um but I want to make sure my chemistry people are set. Alright, so, alright. No more questions. If there are no more questions, I guess we can call it a day. Just want to make sure, are we sure there are no more questions? No issues. Everyone is fine with registration. If, there, if everyone is fine, just drop a one in the chat. Please, if everything is fine with you. If you need to still ask me a question, um, you could inbox me. But apart from that, everything should be good. Alright, so if there are any more issues or concerns, just inbox me. Alright, but apart from that, alright, I hope everybody is fine with that. I hope I answered all the questions to the best of my ability. Alright, so I'll speak to you guys at a later date.